Hello, Fitzpatrick. I'm a councillor in Harrow. I became a councillor in 2014 because I was sick of the politicians that we had and I wanted to make a difference. And everybody told me I was stupid. People tell me why you're in the Labour Party. It doesn't have socialist policies. And I kept saying, you've just got to get more involved. You know, something will happen. I didn't think that Jeremy was going to be the thing that happened. And I was delighted that he came along so quickly after I was elected. And last year, I stood on a platform here with Jeremy Corbyn, same stage. And some of you may have been here that time. Um, but if you were, you'll know that the mood at that time was one of optimism. Unusually for a political gathering, everyone was smiling, everyone was friendly. Meeting had almost a carnival feel to it. But, and everybody was excited that there could be change, there might just be change. And a year is a very, very long time in politics. And I don't know about you now, but I feel somewhat jaded a year later. I feel fury now. I don't feel optimism. I feel such fury at the disloyalty shown to Jeremy over the last year. I feel fury at the coup at a time when we needed our politicians to be attacking the Tories. gerrymandering of the current election. And I felt fury for quite some time at the blatant disregard of natural justice in the suspensions. I thought they would apply to everybody else. I didn't think I'd done anything that warranted a suspension. However, Sunday morning, bank holiday weekend, lots of plans to relax with my family and friends, I got an email. My email, a letter from Ian McNichol telling me I'd been suspended as a councillor, sorry, not as a councillor from the Labour group, but as well as the Labour Party. That I was not able to hold any positions in the Labour Party now, even though I was group vice chair of the group and on the executive. I can't tell you how upset I was. I was more upset than I actually realised I ever would be about being chucked out of the Labour Party. But I was. I couldn't actually talk to anybody. I was so upset. Um, the suspension letter gives very little detail. It said your conduct. My conduct what? My whole life? My whole... I don't know. No dates, no detail. Um, not knowing what you've been accused of is terrible, I can't tell you, it really is terrible. Um, and I work in a law centre and my special, specialism is social security law. I've spent 30 years working in a field that's often described as Kafkaesque, unfi unfair and often surreal. But I can't tell you, there's been nothing more Kafkaesque, surreal or unfair than the way I have been treated by the Labour Party. Thousands of letters were sent out to people over that bank holiday weekend, but there was no helpline for people to ring. There will have been people like me really distraught. Now, I'm very fortunate. I have lots of contacts, both through my job, but also being a counsellor. I've worked with the local MP lots of times. So I've had lots of people that I can draw on for support who have all said, but that's appalling. You are well behaved, you're never rude to people, you have strong views. I waited, waited, waited till Tuesday to speak to the Labour Party. I contacted the number I was supposed to contact, I waited and I waited and I waited. I was then spoke to somebody who said, yes, I'll look into it. The reason they gave me, you're suspended. I said, I know I'm suspended, could you tell me why I'm suspended? They said, no, we'll have to put you through to somebody else who knows. They put me through to the compliance unit. I waited and I waited and I waited. I spoke to somebody and said, can you tell me why I've been suspended? They said, oh, I've got your details here, let me have a look. You've been suspended. I then was rather tearful and said, who do I talk to about this? And lots of people sent me details. They said, ring this number, the electoral reform. Uh, so I contacted them. I was told the person you need to speak to is, given his name, but he's not here, ring back and he'll definitely be able to help you. I waited, I waited, I rang the electoral reform. 
the person I was supposed to speak to, got through to him and they said, no, I can't help you, you've been suspended. <laughs> I then thought, what is the point? I need to put in an appeal. I got more information from Twitter than I have had anywhere else. I've had wonderful support from former leaders of the council, from my MP and lots and lots of members. And what's been really kind is that people I've helped over the years have come out and said how helpful I've been to them. Um, but the thing is, I still don't know the reason. I'm told I can appeal. On the letter, there's no detail about where you can appeal to. There's no detail about time limits. So I would do the natural thing, working in a law centre, you would normally find out the reasons, then appeal. Well, I've discovered that if you do that, you'll miss the very strict 14-day deadline. So you have to appeal this terrible decision without knowing the charges against you. There's no uh, email address as to where to send it or further details or anything. So this really is truly Kafkaesque to me. So I just wanted to kind of think about this fairness. As I said, I've got a platform, I've got a voice. Lots of people don't. There could be somebody who the Labour Party is their main source of social activity. They might be depressed. There might be all sorts of other things going on in their lives. To get a letter like that might be the final straw for them. And no thought or consideration has been given to anybody, any members. There's also the issue that some people have no right of appeal at all. At least I can appeal, but some people can't. So, you're probably all aware, one of the good things that the Labour Party did do was introduce the Human Rights Act, which gives you the right to a fair hearing. Now you will hear lots of MPs at the moment complaining, those dreadful Tories, how can they take away our Human Rights Act? Well, I'd just ask the Labour Party to look to its own practice, because if it were a public body, they'd be under judicial review right now and be found wanting.